never listen and I know what I say. Every time I get myself up, I get paid. I'm not sufficient enough to change your pace. But I keep letting you right back into my place. And I don't know why, baby. lost my septum ring. I've been off YouTube for a variety of reasons. One of them being that Grace had top surgery. I'm not going to share anything about that event on my channel. If they want to share anything, that is totally their prerogative, but I feel like that's their experience and they get to decide what to keep personal and what to put out there. And I'm telling you this so you don't ask me about it. Ask Grace. If they want to fill you in, they will. And if they don't, they'll tell you. Also, content warning. This video is going to cover some very sexually explicit topics. There will be some use of anatomical language for body parts mentions of dysphoria, and potential dysphoria triggers. Viewer discretion is advised. In this YouLube, <coughs> I mean YouTube video, oh no, once we start with the puns, it's a slippery slope. When it comes to wordplay, I'm pretty slick. Enough! Hey everyone! Welcome to my gay guide to lube. AKA sex grease. Slide and ride. Boom boom juice. Squirt for the no hurt. Oil for the toil. Seductive sauce. Lusty liquid. Love jelly. Okay, I'm done. This digital manual is not comprehensive, and that's because there is so much to learn in the world of personal lubricant. Were you aware? I wasn't. So while this video is not lube knowledge exhaustive, I will be sharing some very fun and useful facts. Notice I say gay guide, because although lube is lovely for every kind of folk, in this bit I'll touch on how it can be specifically suited for queer, trans, and asexual people. But it's great for straights, too. Sending love to the cishet cuties who watch me. If you're straight, well that's great. Let's start with the basics. There are three main types of personal lubricant. These are water, silicone, and oil bases. And we should really break down the pros and cons of each. Water-based lubes are exactly how they sound. Lube, whose base material, is water. This offers up some unique properties. These products are good when it comes to feeling non-synthetic. Their aim is to mimic the natural lube produced by vaginas. So typically they don't feel slimy, oily, or fake. They're also compatible with condoms. <laughs> Body safe, toy safe, comparatively affordable, and usually they don't leave stains and are pretty easy to clean up. Water-based lubes do fall short, however, in that they dry up faster than other lubes. This is because our bodies absorb them. So after a certain amount of time and or friction, you can find yourself in a sticky, tacky, or not super slick situation. You can combat this, however, by adding a little water. Or something even more accessible during sex, spit. This will rehydrate and reactivate the product a little longer. Since water-based lubes are water-soluble, they also cannot be used in the tub or shower, as they will dissipate. Next we have silicone-based lubes, whose bases are made of, you guessed it, silicone. Positives when it comes to these lubes is that they're compatible with condoms, body safe, and they last a long, long time. This is because unlike the previous lube, our bodies don't absorb them, so it just sits there on top of our skin and keeps sliding. All you do is waste my time. which additionally makes it hypoallergenic. But it's still good to do a patch test before you really dive into using something. A patch test is when you apply a small amount of lube to your skin or sex toy to see how it reacts. Some lubes don't have the best ingredients and some people have specific sensitivities, so patch testing a lube on your arm can give you some idea of how it might fare on your nether regions. Lubes containing silicone can also sometimes damage silicone toys, so it can be a good idea to patch test those lubes on a non-insertable portion of the toy before using them together. Silicone lubricants do have some negatives though. To start, some folks report they feel artificial, man-made, slimy. They're often more expensive, less accessible, as most high-quality silicone lubes are only available online, and they cannot be used with all toys. Since like dissolves like, because chemistry, magnesium, aluminium, silicone, silicone lubes will break down silicone toys. Here is a science experiment I have conducted for y'all. So 
it's been a few hours, it's later today, and you can see that this side of the toy, the part that was submerged in the lube, has definitely swollen up a bit. We can really see this when we look at this side, like this is way bigger than it used to be. Also notice how much the veins ballooned up. On this side of the toy, they're huge, and on this side of the toy, they're really, really subtle. And obviously you can't feel it through the screen, but over here, the toy is a lot more porous and soft, while over here it's really structured and firm. So while it wasn't the most dramatic change in the world, it's still pretty undeniable that the lube did affect the toy. They are great with metal jelly and glass though. Fun fact, glass dildos can be so beautiful. I mean, just look at the majesty. Also, I'm blown away this product exists. It's a fidget spinner butt plug. Can you imagine this sticking out of someone's bum? And this fella was in the precious metals and gems collection. What a creative, diverse span of fake phalluses in existence. More downfalls, silicone lubes can stain, and since they are so slick, they can be a challenge to clean up. And a real slick side note, silicone is actually my personal favorite lube, but as you mentioned, it can get into your clothing, into your sheets, it can stain. I'm going to deter you for a second though. Don't use detergent to get those stains out. The second that you wash anything with silicone lube with detergent, you are locking those stains in. Instead, get that Dawn dish soap, like that blue stuff that you see everywhere. Soak whatever has that stain in some Dawn dish soap and water, let it sit for a bit, then wash it by hand, rinse, and then put it in an actual wash and dryer with detergent. You're welcome. Finally, we have oil-based lubes. Oil-based items are nice because they can be affordable and easy to get. Oftentimes, all you have to do is open your kitchen pantry to find an oil-based lube, and they can be long-lasting. There are quite a few cons to these products, however. First, they are not compatible with condoms. Watch. They're not always safe with toys, so do your research. They stain, I mean, they're oil. And because they can affect pH balance, oil lubes can cause infections, clog pores, and are definitely not good for vaginal use. In fact, if you wanna play it totally safe, then really these lubes are best for external use only. This means hand jobs on a penis, but stay away from the urethra opening, massages, and etc. Oh, I forgot, there's also hybrid lubes. These motion lotions are made out of a combination of water and silicone bases, so they last longer than solely water-based lubricants. They wash away easier than just silicone bases. And something unique about these products is they look creamy or pearl-like, which is a perfect segue into the next section of this video. How can lubes be great for trans folk? The white opaque quality of these sexy time slimes can add some visual excitement because they mimic the look of penis ejaculations, or semen. So if a trans person is dysphoric because perhaps they don't have a penis that can provide that, then hybrids can potentially step in and help. Lubes can also be awesome for trans people because they make anal easier. Look at that booty, show me the booty, give me the booty, I want the booty. Everyone has a bum, and since the anus isn't gendered, it can be a substitute for genital play if genitals trigger dysphoria. This could include people who don't want to involve or even acknowledge their genitals during sex, as well as folks who want to participate in penetration but lack vulvas slash vaginas. Anal is intimate, sexy, and full of sensation. The anus is so sensitive and tight, in fact, also not self-lubricating, that lube is basically required. Trust me, don't start trying anal without some Hydration helpers. I need the booty, I like the booty, oh what a booty. Lubes are useful for queer folk because many LGBT couples engage in oral or use toys. Since not all body parts are self-lubricating. So clitorises don't lubricate themselves. If you are gonna touch one with a vibrator or hands, then make sure that you are using some lube first. And toys definitely aren't. Lube can make play slicker and easier for varying combinations of sex acts, bodies, and products. Wow, we got explicit. Let's dial it back a bit. How is lube good for individuals on the asexual spectrum? Now, as we explored before on this channel, some aspec folks participate in sex and masturbation, and it's easy to see how lube might be helpful for them, but what about ace people who aren't so into that? Well, lube can still be an excellent tool for intimacy. It can facilitate physical contact that isn't overtly or overly sexual. Grab an oil-based lube, or one specifically made for body rubs, and achieve this through a sensual massage. Grab an arousal lube and your touch kisses and sensations will be enhanced slash altered. Arousal products are a class of lubricants that can stimulate tingles, skin that warms when you blow on it, different temperatures, hot, cold. This one heats up, let's try. Ooh, yeah! 
It's subtle, but nice. And others make body parts tasty when you lick or smooch them. That's right, I'm talking about flavored lubes. There are all kinds of kissy creams out there, including, but not limited to, watermelon. Mmm, green apple. Ooh, mm -mm. strawberry. Not into that one either. Mm. Frosted cupcake. That's my fave. Peaches. Mmm, cream. Oh, a delicate flavor. And even mocha java. Oh, I thought I wouldn't like that one. I really like that one. Too bad Grace doesn't like coffee. If you do grab one of these tasty tubes, be careful. Most of them contain glycerin, and that can cause infections inside genitals. So these are best left for massages and other external use. Experimenting, playing, touching, tasting, having innocent, exploratory, curious, or just sensual fun in the shower, in the bath. These are ways to be close to your partner or partners without engaging in traditional or penetrative or super sexy sex. It's a nice opportunity for closeness and intimate bonding without doing it. Let's go back to chemicals. There are lots of chemicals that are smart to avoid when picking out a lube, especially if you're planning on any of it going inside of you downstairs. I'll put just some of these chemicals on screen and let you know two lubes whose ingredients I like from this video's sponsor, adamandeve.com. Wet platinum and slippery stuff gel. But certainly do your research and see if these products are right for you before buying. And if you're interested in any other item you saw today, they can all be found at, <laughs> that's right, adamandeve.com. You can use discount Discount code ASH to get 50% off almost any single item, plus free shipping in the US or Canada. And I wanted to spread some love in this video, so I'll leave you with some of my favorite sex educators who will share a fun fact they like about lube. There have been some pop culture references, specifically the movie Super Bad, that have linked lube with sexual dysfunction as opposed to sexual excellency. But when I see somebody who packs a pound of lube with them, that to me is the mark of someone who knows what they're doing. There are a lot of activities, anything in the butt, that 100% require the use of lube. In addition, it just takes a lot of your stress off of your partner. You don't know what their conditions are, what their day has been like, and what they're trying to get into. So it just really says, like, I'm most interested in making this experience the best it can possibly be. And to me, the best sex is one that is devoid of stress and of trying to impress. It's just flow. And literally, I don't know what's flowier than lube. Silicone lubes actually have a lot of great uses outside of sexy situations. I've used them to reduce thigh chafing when it's hot out. I know people who use them as a smoothing or styling product on their hair. And if you've got a squeaky or difficult door hinge, a bit of silicone lube will make it glide beautifully. Richard's is actually shown that if you use lube, it increases your rating of pleasure and sexual satisfaction. So if you would invest in a vibrator, maybe you should also invest in lube. I love lube so much. It makes me wet. If you're a kinkster and you like electric play and you like getting shocked consensually, water-based lube is perfect for you. It's not only safe for insertion, but water conducts electricity. If I've learned anything from Pokemon, it's that water conducts electricity. Pikachu Thundershock. Back to Ash. All right, see you later. Okay, bye. Hey there, ho there, before you go there, don't forget to click that link. The YouTube algorithm works in very strange ways. A click's the best way to give Ash Hardell your praise. So hey, ho, before you go, don't forget to click that link.